The following is an unpaid preview for a game seeking funding on Kickstarter. The product seen here is a work in progress and is subject to change during the duration of the project. Hi everyone, I'm Fred in the Garbage Stacker and welcome to the Kickstarter preview to Call of Madness. Yes, this is a game that's taking place in the Cthulhu Mythos where you are not the investigators, but you are the cultists trying to defend your headquarters to hopefully get to summon your <laughs> your creatures and trying to stop these investigators from doing so. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the game. Call of Madness is a board game where you're the cultist defending your headquarters from the incoming swarm of investigators. The goal of the game is to win by completing goal cards in game and goals for the end of the game. Goals can be from pushing and investigating to a player's headquarters or buying certain types of cards. You also score points for the remaining cultists you have left. You begin with three cards in your hand and a couple of investigators ready to greet you. Most of the time you'll play cards and do one of the action groups listed on the left side of the card. At times you might have to pay some madness markers or some actions can only be used at night. Most of the time the cards are used for attacking the investigators on your board or even moving investigators down in another player's headquarters making them lose cultists. Once you play a card that lets you buy cards, then you get to put your bot card into your hand and your character marker onto the god's card you purchased from. Then you may use their power, and you get to use one of the two depending on the turn is day or night. When all players have passed, the investigators move. If there's an outpost, they will skip its space, and if an investigator moves down to the bottom of the board, they've entered the headquarters and you'll lose a number of cultists depending on their strength. For every three in your discard pile, you put out an outpost or lose more cultists if you don't have room. Before the passing player takes their turn, new investigators are drawn onto each player's board. One card is drawn and the characters are refreshed. End of the game occurs when at least one player loses all their cultists. Then all players count up their score from scored gold cards and the number of cultists they have left. The player with the most points wins. Alright, so that was a quick overview of Call of Madness. So here are my thoughts of the game. First of all, it is sort of like you de defend your castle, in, or in this case, it is your cult, and um, with a deck building aspect with into it. And I think it works. For, it works really well with it. Um, you're trying to get the cards in there. Uh, your cultist, which is your life points, is your currency of the game as well. So if you don't have any more currency, that ends the game. And that, I think that is very interesting because you have to kind of work like you know you can get all the good cards you can get the more powerful cards they cost more but you might be kind of like bargaining with um uh, with your points and also with the end of the game as well the cards are very interesting too because you get uh several options you can do you can spend madness which is a another currency in the game that's a little harder to come by uh, day and night, which is something that uh, happens like one day is night, one day is, well, one turn is night, one turn is day, and trying to work like, you gotta hold this card for next time, or do I uh, use it now, and hopefully maybe I can shuffle up in there. And the decks are, and when you're building the, the game, the decks are very small, it's a very precise deck building as well, so it's not a game like the minion where you're buying a lot, bunch of cards in there. This one is a bit more precise, you have to kind of like think about what you're going to buy and the nice thing is that the, the 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 piles where you buy from are face up as well uh and and again this is something that it rebounds itself like you, you can play more cards but the if you play at least every three cards that you play you will get docked with outposts which are not the most friendly thing because they speed up the investigators going to your headquarters and such one of the Things I found surprising about the game is that the addition rules, they don't feel like addition, they feel very important in the rules. For example, the way to get rid of outposts. Outposts are just one of the annoying things in the game that you have to get rid of. The other thing is using powers. When you buy cards, you get to put your characters on a god's power, use their powers, and it's and every time you 
get to uh, buy a card, you get to uh, refresh it as well. So you can use the power of your character and you get to flip it back up as well when you buy a new card. And the last thing is that it your the immediate goals, I think one of the more important ones is immediate goals. This is the other way you can get points in the game. I think you have to pay attention to those. There are, there are three up. Other players are trying to buy for it as well. And I think that's always fun when other people are trying to I have the same goal, but you have to be there first to get it. And then the last thing I'd like to remark is who is this game for? Now, this game, I think that for the difficulty itself, is that it is somewhere between a light to medium game. And I say that because it's just, there are uh, different kind of rules in there. You got deck building, you got defend your kind of castle in there. And that's why I would put it around there because it's just a different layers of rules that you have to get through it. Um, it is a little bit of take that I would say some of the cards will have to you have to do something with uh, with your own board, but you have to affect some other board and they're not it's not too much it is a bit but uh, um, at least it's not too greatly uh, uh, implemented in that way. Uh, for a Cthulhu game, um, if you're looking for something that you know, it's not a very happy friendly game. It is a very grotesque. It's not um, gruesome, I would say. It is grotesque with the Cthulhu art, with the horror in it, but it's not something that uh, um, if you, it's more of scary monsters rather than something that's very um, gruesome or very graphic in a way. The last thing I like to say is that the, uh, I th the gameplay is a bit more represented in this game than the theme itself. It's a bit more abstract. I want to say it's, it is more of an abstract kind of game and um, which you're trying to uh, move around the pieces, trying to dig, uh And the last point I like to make is that it's a game that I think the gameplay is a bit more supported than the theme. Now, it doesn't say that it's the, I think the theme does support the gameplay in there, but I think the gameplay is a bit more, um, more, more, more there. It's a, it is more of an abstract kind of game where you're taking the cards, you are going there, but I think the theme, um, is a bit there. It is trying. You are the. You are trying to push back the investigators, or like at least take them out. The the cards day and night during the turn in there. But for me, it does feel a bit more uh, mechanical at the end. And so that was Call of Madness. So this is a game that's on Kickstarter right now. Go ahead and check it out. And this is a something like you like to check out and support. Okay. All right. So that was. Call of Madness. So it's a Kickstarter project that's on right now. And see, go ahead and click in the link below. And this is something that you like to support. Anyway, I'm Fernand the Carver Stacker. Thanks for checking this video out. And as always, keep on stacking games. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on boarding card games. This is the Cardboard Stacker and remember to keep on stacking games.